I've noticed some C++ beginners asking for help and how to even build their code. They say their complaint is there are plenty of tutorials on basics of programs, if, else, loops, and all that sort of thing. But there seems to be very little on how you take a bunch of source files and compile them into a program. Uh, now, I agree that seems to be skipped over and the C++ world can be complicated and messy. So, I've created a simple minimal example to show you how to do it with CMake as your build system. Let's have a look. So here is my very simple two source file example. So you've got main.cpp, which is where the start of the program is, and it calls a function from the hello.cpp file, and here is hello.cpp's header file, or .h file. And the question was, how do you compile a multiple file program into one program? And here is the CMake list file for CMake. As you can see, it's nice and short, which should mean it's very easy for you to follow. First line, as it suggests, is telling it CMake which the minimum required version of CMake is. Now, CMake has changed a lot over the years. And obviously, older versions don't support the latest stuff. So we don't strictly need 3.24, but I suggest, unless you have a reason to, just leave it at a fairly modern version. The next line says what the name is of our project. So I've called it Hello World, because it's a, what, the, the usual Hello World introductory program. Next, we set a variable called source files, and we set this to the names of all the star.cpp files, all the source files that we want to compile. And the final line says, add an executable. So we are creating an executable called project name. And the project name is created by this project line. And this executable is built from the source files. So it's built from main.cpp and hello.cpp. And that's it. So if we now, I, I could build it in, in VS Code, but let's do this from the command line, the way that they usually tell you to. So the first step, um, because building creates all these files and we don't want to create a mess in our, in our source tree, we create a build directory. So mkdir build. Now we change to that directory with cd build, and we need to tell it cmake. We want to build build the files from the parent directory, not not so that cmake list is not in the build directory. It's in the parent directory, and, and we give that with a double dot, uh, which is just it doesn't seem logical. It's just the way it's done. And double dot means the parent directory. And now it's found my compiler. CMake is working to generate a make file. So there it goes. Um, generating the make file is done. Now we can compile it with CMake double dash build. And this time we tell it use the current directory. And that's given by a single dot. Again, not obvious, not intuitive. It's just the way it's done. And now the, the generated build file is run and it's done. So now because I'm running this on Windows and I'm using uh, the Visual Studio compiler, it's created a debug version in a subdirectory. I'll, I'll show you if you look at the directory. You can see there's a, a, a debug directory and that's where the ex executable is. So if I now go to CD debug, you will see hello world.exe is there and if I run Hello world, you can see it prints hello world. All done. Right, that covers the basics. However, you're not going to get far unless you have a compiler and effectively a development environment set up. So let me show you how to do that now with VS Code and CMake. There are multiple things you need to download and install in order to get up and running. So first, I suggest you download CMake from cmake.org slash download. Uh, you can download the version for your system. If you're on Linux, you can get that via your favorite package manager. Once you've installed that, I recommend downloading Visual Studio Code and installing that. And once you've done that, uh, you're still not done. 
because you need to, in, within CMake, you need to install the C++ and CMake tools packages. I've already got them installed, along with a few others. What you'd normally do is you type into, you click on the extensions uh, button over here, and in the extensions you type C++ slash C++ to get the C++ compiler. It's important that you get the, just get the Microsoft one, which is everything that you need. And then once you've installed that one, for some reason it says reload required for me, let's just let it reload. And then the other one that you want is CMake tools. So once again, you would search in the box up here and type CMake tools. Uh, there are other CMake tools or, or CMake uh, plugins for Visual Studio. This is the one that I recommend you get. It's the one that I'm using. After you've installed that one, you will end up with this blue bar down here. And at that point, this one will probably say that the there is no active kit. Uh, it's a bit of a bit weird terminology. The kit is basically saying what your target is. In my case, I want to use the Visual Studio Community 2019 compiler. It's basically choosing the compiler. So in my case, I chose the AMD 64 Visual Studio compiler. You can let it automatically choose what it thinks is the best one. When I tried to do that, it decided that GCC or MingW32 was the, the best option. Since I'm working on Windows, I'd rather it use Visual Studio's compiler. And from there, you click on the build button here. You'll see the little cog and the build button down the bottom of the screen. You click on that and it, you'll see the output here that it executes all the commands to build your project. And you can also debug it from down here. So you click on the debugger down here and it'll run. Well, build and run. And you'll see in the debug console, it prints out hello world. Now there is a slight problem with Visual VS Code at the moment. When you debug using the, uh, well, where has it gone? Let me enlarge this to the entire screen. So when you use this, this button to debug, the print statements won't appear until after the program exits for some reason. If you want to be able to step through a program like this, I'll, I'll put two breakpoints in just before and after the print hello, then you need to go and add under VS Code, you add a launch.json. I, I suggest you just grab the one from my example, which you'll be able to download from a link below this video. Uh, just copy this. This has launch configurations which use an external terminal when debugging. And what that does is, uh, let me go to is it run, start debugging. What that will do is that will open an external console window, which is that one there. And of course, I have everything covered up, so let me bring that in front. And now, when you use this external terminal, it's a little bit clunky, but now if I let it run, so let it execute this print hello, you will see the hello world, uh, which you won't see if you use the, the, the button down the bottom here, which is now obscured. Let me just do that again. If you run it from here, first, it won't show the debug console immediately. And when you click on the debug console, when you, if you let it run the print hello, you won't see the print hello down the bottom and the, and the debug console down below until after the program exits. So as I say, to, to get around that right now, you would add a launch.json file. Just as I say, just copy my one. And then you can use the run start debugging here and it'll, it'll open up an external console. Now, obviously, if you're writing a program that opens up its own window and, and displays things and doesn't use printf or print anything to the console, then you don't need to do this. So that's it all done. This is the example. As I say, the most important thing is this is the CMake file for you to compile multiple source files into one program. If you, as you add more files, you just add them in here. So if you had a goodbye.cpp, you would just add that in here. And that should get you started. That's it for now. I will see you next time.